May I be happy. Today, we're going to take a tour through our five week journey at Compassion Camp, remembering all the ways that we can show and sow seeds of love wherever we go. Let's start with our Compassion Camp first. It's time to hide the seed of God's Word in your heart. When you hide His words in your heart and practice them, you can grow the fruit of love to share with others. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other. Forgiving each other. Just as God through Christ. Just as God through Christ. Forgave you. Forgave you. Ephesians 4.32 On our first week of Compassion Camp, we learn how to jump into action and show compassion when we see, feel, and help heal the hurts of those all around us. Mother Jochebed and the daughter of the Pharaoh and Sister Miriam all jumped into action and showed compassion and courage in order to save the life of young Moses and protect him from the law of the Pharaoh. They covered their fear with faith and love as they all worked together with courage to save one child. His mother made a basket with papyrus and covered it in tar, just like the Egyptian boats, so that he would be safe. It teaches us that when we have done all that we can do, that we should stand, letting go and letting God, trusting Him with all our heart. She placed him by the river where the Pharaoh's daughter would find him, and Moses' sister watched from a distance. God also watches over you. God works behind the scenes, and even when he seems silent, he weaves everything together for our good, just as Jochebed lovingly weaved a basket to protect her son. When the Pharaoh's daughter found him among the weeds, she saw him crying. Then Miriam came out of her hiding place to help the Pharaoh's daughter. She would need Moses' mother to take care of him. God finds special ways to take care of us too. Do you see how God works and how important it is to trust Him? Jochebed just happened to put Moses on the right spot along the Nile. Pharaoh's daughter just happened to see the basket. Moses just happened to cry at the right time. Miriam just happened to be nearby. Jochebed just happened to be available and able to take care of the child. The Pharaoh's daughter just happened to have enough influence to save baby Moses. Even when God seems silent, He is always working for the good of His children. God often works behind the scenes of our lives too, because He loves us and even works through our love. You are like Jesus' heart, hands, voice, and feet in the world. And He will empower you to be ready to jump into action and show compassion. And if you're ever not sure what to do or say, pray. On our second week of Compassion Camp, we learn how to see, feel, and help heal ourselves so that we are rested and empowered with God's power. Every living thing has needs, and God cares for us by providing what we need. And when we use what God gives us, we can thrive and grow. When our needs are met, then we can live and grow into all that God has created us to be. God created Elijah to be a prophet and to speak to the kings of Israel, because they forgot how he wanted them to live. Elijah's name even reminded them, Eli means my God, and Jah is eternal one. But they felt challenged by Elijah and threatened his life. So he ran away in fear, instead of standing strong in faith. After wearily wandering in the desert, he was afraid, alone, hungry, lonely, and tired. They wanted it all to end. Elijah finally slept, weary from worrying. But the angel of the Lord, which was Jesus before he was born, came down to wake up Elijah and feed Elijah himself with warm bread and water, so that he would have energy to reach Mount Sinai and listen to God's words. There God met him, but God wasn't in the wind, and God wasn't in the earthquake, and God wasn't in the fire. But then he heard God in the whispers of encouragement, just like God encourages you through his words. God reminded Elijah that he was not alone, and that he was working everything out for good, even when Elijah's stinky thinking kept him from seeing it. God cared about Elijah no matter what. Then Elijah was encouraged and energized no matter how things looked. Just like the Word of God brought us to life, it still renews our life to this day. Just as God's words of encouragement empowered Elijah. God even sent an angel of the Lord to personally take care of Elijah. Just as God later sent His Son to save and take care of us because He loves us. So even when it looks hopeless, there is never an end to God's love and care. 
or His power to supply our needs. God is with us and His love will never run out. Have you ever felt like Elijah? Hungry? Angry? Lonely? Tired? Just think of all the people who see, who feel, and who heal your hurts. And know that God does the same. Will you do it for yourself too? On our third week of Compassion Camp, we learn how to see, feel, and help heal the needs of our neighbors, even reaching out to our friends in Malawi. When you look at the world from space, there are no lines of division. God never drew any lines between states and countries. Even when the world began, it started as one big landmass before the oceans rose from the depths of the earth. God is holding us in His hands and He wants us to walk hand in hand too. Every day we can show compassion to everyone around us, even if we don't live near each other. But there might be walls between us and our neighbor. And there might be hurt feelings between family and friends. But we find ways to cross those barriers and show compassion to one another. Even firefighters have agreements to connect neighborhoods, cities, and even states to work as a team no matter what. That's compassion in action. Will you break through the barriers and build a bridge to show compassion to your neighbor? Barriers cannot hold back love. Jesus told a parable story about the Good Samaritan in response to the expert of the law seeking to trap him when he said, Who is my neighbor? But as Jesus told the story, he flipped the question, Who should you be a neighbor to? In the parable, the priest and the Levi were walking back home after serving in the temple and reading God's laws. But they kept walking when they saw the hurt man and turned the other way. But then came a Samaritan. The Samaritans were called the enemies of the priest, the Levite, and even the hurt man. The Samaritan man showed compassion by seeing his hurt, feeling his hurt, and sacrificing to help heal the man's hurt. Then Jesus told the expert of the law, go and do as he did. So be empowered by God's love or you might find yourself walking away from others too. If we are trying to love other people with our own strength, it's a very hard thing to do. We might be tempted to just look the other way, like the priest and Levite did. But when we remember how much Jesus loved us, that he gave up heaven and earth to be with us forever, we should take his love and pass it on to others. It's like Jesus pouring his love into our hearts. It overflows into the lives of anyone in need. Jesus was the perfect neighbor to us, taking care of us when we could not, healing our sin wounds when we were powerless to heal ourselves. He wants us to show that same love and compassion to others who need it. Don't be like the priest and Levite that go their own way. Go God's way. He bent down from heaven to show love to us so we can show love to others. Jesus used this parable to help us understand that our neighbors are more than those who live next to us. Our neighbors can be anyone that we meet in the entire world. It doesn't matter who we are or where we come from. God calls all of us to be good neighbors. On our fourth week of Compassion Camp, we learn how to see, feel, and help heal those throughout the world. There are over 7,000 languages in the world. Some languages are spoken with the hands through sign language. Even our Bible verse motions use ASL for the word forgive, showing how God wiped away all of our sins, and also for the word Christ, as it points to your palm remembering how Jesus died on the cross to wipe away all your sins. Our words can be very powerful. Just like flames of a fire, it has the ability to change people's lives forever. Even the lives of people we don't know. So we have to make sure that the words that come out of our heart reflect God's heart. Because God loves them too. But how do you communicate with someone if you don't know how to speak their language? How can you see their hurt? How can you feel their hurt? How can you help heal their hurt? Well, on the day of Pentecost, the apostles showed compassion to thousands of people from around the world, and they didn't even know their languages. The day of Pentecost, though, was not like any other day. It was a birthday with a present. Because it was the day that the church was created. But just like a birthday, you don't want to have balloons that look like this. You want your balloons to be filled like this. He sent his Holy Spirit to fill the hearts of those who believed in him. So they could go out into the world to tell others of God's presence. On the day of Pentecost, there were no language barriers. 
Pentecost was a birthday filled with lights, winds, and presents, as well as God's presence, and everyone was invited. It was the day that the church was born, and God gave us a special gift to tell the whole world about His love. So as they waited for the helper that Jesus promised, suddenly a gusty wind and little flames of tongues appeared over their head. The flames over the heads of the apostles empowered them to lead others to the promised land of heaven. And God's gift came to them in the form of flaming tongues because it empowered them to speak of God's love in different languages. Dios es bueno. Jesús nos echa que sirve. Jesús nos perguichna. Pacas de zo. Jesús has rescued us. Glory be to God. Jesús alito koa. Mungu asifiwe. Jesus nos rescató. Alabado sea Dios. Jesús nos ha salvado. Dios nos ha salvado. Alabemos al Señor. Jesús ha piquisibiso. Tican zombe a cumiso. Elohim to visla. Isu watu buswa. Pican zombe kasakumulwa. Oh Jesús se rapai. God is good. The people from the visiting countries were amazed, but some didn't believe it. But through the empowering of the Holy Spirit, 3,000 people repented that day. Repent means to come back home. They spent their time celebrating together as brothers and sisters in Christ. They sang together, danced together, rejoicing in all that God had done for them. They learned the words of God together and hid it in their hearts. They prayed together day and night. They cooked and ate together, sharing everything they had with one another so that no one was in need. And every day more and more people came to join in their life together. And just like he empowered his apostles, he empowers us with his Holy Spirit, which is our helper to this day. We are his witnesses, reflecting his light to the ends of the earth, as we keep our eyes on him and follow his directions, and tell others how much he loves them. To be filled with his presence and power, just pray and invite him into your life. So God is not only with us, his presence is within us, and transforms you from the inside out just like this balloon, so we can display His love wherever we go. On the fifth week of Compassion Camp, we learn how to sow seeds of love along our way, just as others have sown the seeds of love into our lives. How many of you enjoy getting letters and cards from family and friends? <laughs> look, look, I got a letter! Every time someone sends you a letter of encouragement, it's like they're planting a seed of love in your heart. And when you receive it, it fills you with joy and energy to help you get through your day. As you know, there are many people that help us on our journey. Even the Holy Spirit empowers us with God's power. And with all this help, we are empowered to show loving kindness to everyone around us. Paul, who saw the resurrected Jesus, encouraged many of the new churches after Pentecost. And when he couldn't be with them, he wrote many letters of love, encouragement, and thanks to his friends from different countries, expressing such loving thankfulness to each of the friends who had helped him along his journey. He then encouraged them to keep showing Jesus' love to each other along the way. Even Christians from thousands of years ago have shown compassion to everyone around them, even when it was hard to do. They kept their eyes focused on Jesus and followed the example of love that he had shown to them. And then they shared that love to everyone around them. Because they were faithful to follow Jesus' instructions, no matter what, we can be encouraged to do the same, knowing that God will help us to be victorious too. But as Paul wrote most of those letters, he was enduring very difficult circumstances. But he still told others to rejoice always, giving thanks to God, and to not be anxious in anything, but to always pray so that the peace of God would protect their hearts and minds. No matter what we go through, prayer and praising God will always help us to have an attitude of gratitude, being thankful no matter what. Paul faced incredible struggles, but God empowered him with His power, and He can do the same for you. God is always by your side. You are not alone. Paul taught us to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
and we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We do not need to be afraid. And King David used to be a shepherd, and he would fight lions and bears to protect his sheep. There were times that he was scared, but he would always hold a rod and a staff. And on that rod, he would always write God's words that would help him remember that God was always by his side. And as he looked at it, it would empower him with God's power. In ancient times, that rod showing God's faithfulness would be passed down from generation to generation as an inheritance, so they could be encouraged as well. In a relay race, a person starts their journey while carrying a baton. With faith and perseverance, they finally reach out and pass that baton to you to complete the race. The race might be hard, but as you remember the faith and perseverance of others who ran before you, you can finish that race victoriously. And no matter what, God is with and within you to guide your steps. We have so much to be thankful for. With all this help, we can continue the legacy of showing love to everyone along the way. The Bible even says, let us run with endurance that race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, and he will help you run with perseverance, energizing you so you don't give up no matter what. Just keep walking strong with faithful perseverance as you keep your eyes on God's words, because Jesus is your superhero and he empowers you with his power. Because true thankfulness comes when you're best friends with him and always remember that God is traveling by your side. This year at Compassion Camp, we did so many crafts. We even journaled the acts of compassion we showed towards each other. We made gifts to sow seeds of love to our neighbors near and far. We even learned how to take care of ourselves by taking in deep breaths and learned to keep our eyes on God's promises. He is always walking by our side. We even created a prayer jar to pray for those we love throughout the day and supported our missionary friends who live far away. Just like God rewards us for acts of compassion, we want to reward you too. With Minnow and Pureflix prizes valued at $240, when you submit your videos to paznaz.familylife at gmail.com by July 25th.
of our beautiful home. Next part goes like this. A, A, O, O, all of us. A, A, O, O, community. A, A, O, O, all of life is a part of our beautiful home. Sing that with me. A, A, O, O, all of us. A, A, O, O, community. for joining us this year of Compassion Camp. May God guide you and protect you as he walks beside you, knowing that he will help you sow seeds of love wherever you go. Love you all dearly. God bless you abundantly. May you be at peace. May you be happy.